Welcome back. So after last Friday's run of the engine, I was looking at the data again. This is that same video I showed you last time. And um, one thing that sort of stood out there was where the um, EGT started to really ramp up steeply there, sort of kind of right there. And um, it sort of correlates just after where the intercooler temperature started to really um, ramp up. And so it's kind of my thinking that what's happening is the intercooler is getting a little bit heat soaked and so it's not doing as good a job and then ultimately more hot air is going into the engine and obviously more compression in the cylinders and stuff um, as the power ramps up but having more hot in there you get more hot air coming out um, you know in the exhaust so uh, my goal is now to try and uh, see if I can remedy that somewhat and uh, that should lower the um, amount of power coming out of the exhaust which will lower the boost um, that we have you know for any given amount of or rpm and ultimately um, you know even out the boost a little bit more for the amount of fuel being delivered so um, in order to do that um, i need to come up with another way to get a little bit more um, cooling on that uh, intake air and how i've decided to do that is by uh, picking up one of these so this is a water to air intercooler as you can see there and uh, it, it'll basically fit in our setup and so how it works is the air goes through it um, on the intake side and then what I'll be doing is uh, hooking it into that same uh, loop that we have right now for the heat exchanger so uh, air, the water will be going in there or it actually will end up being the fuel from the tanks going in there and then coming out and basically looping through so I'll be actually pulling more heat out of the engine prior to going in the engine and using that to uh, heat the fuel again and then uh, this is how it'll look where I'm going to position it there so it'll be coming right out of turbo number two it'll go through this one and uh, you know basically take as much heat out of that um, hot air there and, and send that into the uh, wing tanks and then it'll go through the second intercooler where it'll just get some air cooled there and so that'll actually help keep the engine cool as well because it won't be as much hot air coming out of the intercooler going through the radiator um, so it'll just it should be a win 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 uh, anyway so moving on um, back on the doors a little bit more things going on here so this is a uh, Jeff setting up here and pouring some expanding foam into the very top frame of the doors here to just give it a little bit more um, structure and rigidity and if you watch carefully you can see here's it's starting to um, flow out the top there so we're just basically filling up that top channel there and that's why I put those fences in the frames there the other day was to um, allow it, us to do this without the foam going all the way down into the rest of the frame because we don't really need it in the rest of the frame and this is still yesterday Monday the guys are now putting the core into that second door and uh, vacuuming a uh, vacuum bag that down so it gets pushed uh, really nicely against the inside of the uh, outer skin and now we're on to today and this is uh, Jeff uh, in the process of um, laying up the spa for the four plane the main spa and as you can see he's put the first layer of uh, carbon down there or at least in the process of doing that and getting it all uh, wet out and a similar this is similar to the other one just has a few hard points in there and uh, then it'll get uh, closed out I uh, believe uh, tomorrow so you know with the second part of the layup and Jim and I have spent this week so far working on um, the hydraulic system for the landing gear and we're getting close to having that uh, operational so with any luck you may actually see that on um, Saturday's video so here's Jim just putting in some of the hard point or some of the bolts there um, for the front nose retraction arm and here's that second door now so the um, all the bag was um, taken off of that in the morning and then uh, the guys have done the, now the closeout layup on that one so um, that one's almost getting finished as well and so here's that foam that was laid in there so Keith's um, been spending a little bit of time just sort of fairing that back out to the flanges and then we're going to be filling in those pockets there with some uh, heavier material and then uh, putting the upper skin on there so as you can see he's just working there with a the little air tool and just cleaning up that foam that foam is actually pretty hard uh, once it sets up it's you'd think it'd be soft foam but it's actually really really quite strong and uh, you can't just sort of you know push your fingernail into or anything like that it's quite hard to work with and there's the four plane spa now uh, under the bag after it had the you know first round of layups and the core put in there so as I said tomorrow that'll get um, 
peeled back again and then um, the closeout plies put in there and then bagged again and then we'll have both of the spars done for the foreplane. And I think I mentioned last time that we'd finished the uh, cabling for the aileron rigging. So here's Jimmy's moving the stick uh, back and forth. And of course that center stick just connects to the side sticks. You won't actually be using that yourself directly. And so there's the uh, one of the aileron bell cranks there just moving. And that'll have a push rod that connects to, it, to the actual aileron out in the wing and further out in the wing. And uh, here's Jim just uh, showing you how we've got the tension working there. So it's reading basically 45 on there, whatever that is. Actually 42. It'll come down a little bit more. We're letting the cable stretch out some more. And at the end of today, Keith had pretty much finished uh, getting both of those doors prepped. And there was a bunch of other things he did as well, but um, they're prepped for the upper skins now. And uh, Zach's working on getting that uh, actuation handle bolted back in on that first door. And moving on to the redrive, just give you an update on what's going on with that. So uh, this is where it, it looks right now. It's pretty much finished in terms of all the design aspects that we needed to do. So there's the, the shaft, the new prop shaft. And it's slightly different uh, than the previous one that we had. And so these nubs here um, are the ones that um, support the thrust there. So that one is a thrust one and that one's a thrust one. The thrust washers push up against that. There's the oil feed holes there. And the oil comes back through the center there uh, into the prop. Uh, for the constant speed prop. So that one's actually been sent off for machining now. We should have that one back in about sort of six weeks. Um, and then, because Mark's already done all the drawings and stuff for that, and he's in the process of putting the drawings together now uh, for the housing as well. And along the lines of other things that need to be done, these are the brackets that are going to hold it in place, and they made up with the existing uh, engine mount that we currently have. And then to show you uh, what's going on on the inside here, if I hide some of these bits and pieces, you'll be able to get a better view of what's going on on the inside. So, uh, yeah, just hiding the brackets there. Get those out of the way. I won't hide all these bolts. That won't take too long. Uh, but anyway, so uh, what we have here now is all the different stuff on the inside. So first thing is, uh, I guess, the journal bearings. So those are the ones that are oil-fed, and they separate uh, from the shaft. And so... Um, shaft doesn't actually touch them and then you've got the uh, thrust washers there that I just highlighted and then these are the washers that um, have a very tight fit and allow us to keep the pressure of the oil running into the prop and then on the either ends we have the uh, main seals there so uh, that's pretty much the most of the stuff that's going on on the inside there if I just isolate the main housing on one side of it you can see how we have the oil feeds going on so we've got these channels here and this is exactly how Continental does it so we have an oil feed coming from the top there of the housing. Um, so there'll be a fitting there bringing it in. And that's just regular engine oil coming in there um, from the same uh, feed that the engine run, runs off of. And then that will feed uh, into these channels. And that basically feeds upper and lower holes in the uh, journal bearings uh, through this, this channel there. And then we also have this uh, little side channel there. And that th feeds uh, oil onto uh, the thrust washers as well. So they don't have any uh, friction on them against the uh, prop shaft. And then to allow the oil to drain, uh, we've got these main ones there and then also a drain off of the uh, thrust washers as well. And that all drains into this uh, lower sump. And then there'll be a big fitting in there that'll feed back into the sump of the engine as well. So that's basically that one circuit. And then in terms of the oil feed to the prop, that's coming off the high pressure feed from the governor. And that will go in that through that fitting there and then go into the prop and then some of it will blow by those washers and uh, then that'll also drain um, back into the sump of this thing and then back into the engine. So two separate oil feeds, two different pressures but all ultimately draining in the same spot. So Mark should have the drawings for that finished um, by next week sometime and uh, have them sent off for milling and again they'll take about six weeks as well. And in terms of what's going on um, this next week with Oshkosh, so I'm actually going up there on a uh, Thursday evening and I'll have a video out for you guys on uh, Friday or Saturday. And then after that, maybe I'll put something out while I'm up there. But other than that, there may not be a video next week at all. So hopefully you guys don't get uh, too jonesing for something. But otherwise, you'll have to wait till after that. Anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week. And thanks again for watching.